Hello everyone, we're going to start designing our quiz and I'm going to be using these instructions here uh, to help me out. This is the user interface that we're going to start designing. I'm going to start off as the instructions say with our template by opening it and then immediately save project as. Now you can't start with a number so I put my initials first, you can put yours and then today's date 170501 and then quiz app and then maybe my name as well. That's going to allow me to have a second project and leave my template alone. Uh, if I look at my projects you can see it there that's the one that I will be editing and making changes to and if I look at my main screen where I'm going to start this design I can actually remove this placeholder information here. I'm going to scroll down and delete that and that's going to get me started. So if you look at the first thing here we have is an image box and then I have the directions for each one of these what they do down here at the bottom. So this is a box where the images for each question will be displayed and we're allotting 30 percent of the screen height to that image. Now these boxes are the same thing as horizontal arrangements for most of these with one vertical arrangement for the question and answer section. So where you see box think arrangement. Let me go ahead and go down to the layout and I'm going to grab a horizontal arrangement and drag it to the screen. I'm going to rename it and if I want to have exactly the same I've made it easy I Can go down here and grab image box and that's what I'm going to rename it to. Rename, paste that in there and now you can have exactly the same name as I do. This is very important for me to be able to help you with debugging or anybody else for that matter because if you have different names of different things in here than I do then your blocks are going to be very different as well as far as what they're called. Okay so we're going to center that. Uh, a line vertical is going to be at the top so that the picture is always at the top no matter how tall it is. The height this is where we're going to give it 30 percent of the screen and the width is going to be fill parent. So this is where the image is going to go. Um, I won't put an image in there just yet but that is where the picture is going to go. So let's go ahead and grab the next thing. If we look over here we can see that it's the quiz image. So let's go back to user interface and find image and put it in there. As long as I'm here I can copy and rename that down here to the quiz image. Now if I have 01.jpg already in here I could put it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave the height and width automatic and I want to grab one of those pictures. So I was doing some editing earlier so let me go ahead and go to the supercar quiz where I have that very first image 01.jpg. So I'm not only uploading it here but it's also being applied. Please notice that on the display screen uh, we are not going to be able to see the whole picture. It's only when we put it on a device that we'll be able to see what it's actually going to look like. Okay so we've got our quiz image in the image box. Let's check that. So going back to Android programming you can see right here that the quiz image is number two and it should be height width automatic. There's the first picture and yes it is visible. So we might experiment with the scaling the picture but I think we're just going to keep it at the 400. Alright so let's go back to MIT App Inventor uh, in order to place the next one which is an answers box. This is the most complex one because it actually has another box inside of it. So let's get started. So answers box here I can go down and find it. That's number three. Might as well copy this while I'm at it and it's going to be centered with no background color with a height automatic width fill parent. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the layout. Another horizontal arrangement. We're going to go down and rename it answers box. It's going to have an automatic height but the width is going to be fill parent and we'll center everything that's in there can be centered right in the middle. Now we will have uh, no background for this one. 
If I want to change the background color for the whole screen, I can do that here. Uh, but actually, probably best to go ahead and put an image in there. So let me choose one of these that I've already added so that you can see what we can uh, see through and what's going to be blocked out. Okay, so inside of here, we're going to have several things. If we take a look again at the screenshot, you can see that we've got a couple of labels, select and choice. Here they are. And that's just text um, that's going to show up on the screen. And then we're going to have four buttons, A, B, C, D. And those are going to go inside of their own arrangement, and they'll get a certain percentage of the screen. Then here's the other label, and then this is where the answer is going to show up. So let's go ahead and add the select label now that we have the answers box. So let's grab a label. What's it supposed to look like? Well, let's take a look here. Select label is number four. If I look at number four, you can see uh, that it's going to have a background color, uh, nice and bold, 14. Okay, so we're just going to create the select label now. Going back up to the user interface and looking for label, putting it inside. Uh, this one is going to be renamed as well. And then we're going to change the text inside here to select equals. And that's going to allow us to see what we want uh, that to show up as. So if you look at my original, you can see that it's actually got a very dark background. So it's going to make the text really light. You can change up these colors. They do not need to be exactly the same as long as everything stays nice and legible. So let's maybe make this a little bit different. Um, let's take a look here. The select label is going to have an automatic width and height, just depending on the font size. And I've got select and a colon here, but I put an equals. That should work pretty well. All right, so let's go ahead and add our next part. Again, jumping back here, I've got a button box. This is going to be another horizontal arrangement with the A, B, C, and D buttons in it. Uh, important to note here that with the button box, everything's still centered, but we're going to set that box so it's using 40% of the screen. Uh, that's because we want those buttons to not get pushed around too much. They are going to have enough room on there. That's because they need to touch that in order to make their selection. So 40% of the screen. Let's go ahead and choose another horizontal arrangement and put it just to the right of the selection. We're going to rename that the button box. And inside of that button box, we don't need to have anything visible. So we're going to change the background color to none. And again, we can, I believe, center everything. And it's this width where we want to use 40% of whatever the screen is in order to show those buttons right there. So with an automatic height, uh, you can imagine bigger buttons or smaller buttons. Let's go ahead and make those now. Go over here. Next one is the A button. Okay, we're going to need a B, C, and D. Uh, height and width are automatic based on the text that's in there. So let's go ahead and grab this text. We will change it for the other buttons as well. And it's going to have the letter A on there. So when I take my user interface button again and put it in there, we're going to rename it. This is the A button. So the text that's on it should just be the letter A. We can make that rounded or circular, but I'm just going to leave these as squares for right now. Let's go ahead and do the other buttons as well. So let me go ahead and add in another button, rename it, of course change the A to a B, and then change the text to a B. A couple more.
Okay, so it may not show all the buttons on here, but when we look at it on the device, we will check that. Now we need another label. Oh, wait, let me rename this one. The D button. And now we've got the first part done of the answers box. Now we need a couple more things. Let's take a look at what those are. We need a label that says the word choice. Looks like I misspelled choice there. Funny. I will have to fix that. And I'm going to go and grab a label. Put it right there. And change it to the choice label. And do the same thing here. Choice equals. So now we've got select one of these and the choice. And then their choice is going to show up right here. We don't want them typing things into that box we want it to just display whatever letter it is that they put there uh, but I believe we can use a text box to do that let's give it a try so this text box is going to be called answer text and we're going to set that according to what button they press renaming that to answer text now we probably do want a background color there so I'm going to go ahead and make it white and then we can put a hint there or we can delete that. It's not going to be very large, so we really don't have room. And we just want them to press the button. So we don't want to confuse anybody with any hints there. It's not going to have any text in it to begin with. Let's take a look at what the settings are for that. So let's go to the answer text uh, number eight. So as you can see here, it's got a width of 20%, uh, and I believe the font size is a little bigger. Uh, we can go back and make changes to those kinds of things in order to get it lined up nicely. But let's go ahead and change this width to 20% of the screen. Again, can't see much changing on here, but that's essentially what we have displayed right here as well. So. That's the first part of this. We'll continue with part two. Uh, as you can see, going back and forth and getting the names uh, directly from here is going to help you out so you don't have to type all that in. Uh, I'll see you in part two.